Hi, my name is James Shepard, and we're in a mini series right now, kind of back to the basics, just talking about merchant services. What is it? How does it work? In the last video, I talked to you about what is merchant services, and we talked about you know moving money. So basically, we're just taking the customer's money and getting it over to the business owner. And so what we talked about in the last one is kind of the history of merchant services. How did it start? You know, how, what does it do? What is it? This time we're going to talk about how do you actually make money selling merchant services? I mean, you know, with the moving of the money around, how does that actually work? So as we discussed in the last video, there are some costs of moving the money around and those costs are primarily called the interchange fees. Okay. Now interchange fees are charged by the banks and the banks say, we're going to charge an interchange fee in order to move this money around and they're going to hold a certain amount of money. So the way it really works with interchange is that if you're a consumer, you walk into a business, pull out your card and you spend a hundred dollars, right? Well, what happens is when the money leaves your bank, so let's say you bank at Chase and let's say that the business owner banks at Wells Fargo. So Chase Bank needs to move $100 from your account at, Wells, at, at Chase to the, the business owner's account at Wells Fargo. What actually happens is your bank doesn't move $100. Your bank moves $98.40 or something, right? Depending on the interchange fee for your particular card and the way that you processed it, they're gonna hold some of the money back as interchange costs and they're only gonna move $99.40 or whatever over to Wells Fargo. So when the business owner gets their money, they don't get all of their money because these interchange fees were held back, okay? Now, in order to facilitate all that stuff, there's a couple things that really have to happen, all right? If you think about the logic of this, there's no way that a small business owner is going to be able to deal with all of these bank relationships. Because even though you have Visa that's tying everything together in terms of like getting authorizations and, and authorization codes and like, you know, is checking the balance to make sure it's available and all that, they're not moving the money. The money still has to move from one bank to another bank. And it's not feasible for a small business owner to say, oh yeah, I just got a deposit yesterday for $7.40 from Wells Fargo and another one from this bank and from this bank. And you know, they're not going to do that, right? Somebody has to like tie this all together. And that's where a certain kind of bank comes in called an acquirer or an acquiring bank. So you have um, a bank that's uh, the bank that's the issuing bank that issues the cards, and then you have an acquiring bank. And so the issuing bank issues the money to the acquiring bank. So when you think of a processor, we think of these big processors, First Data, Vantive, um, Global, Tesis, you know, these big processing companies. What most of them really are is they're something called an acquirer. An acquirer simply means they're acting as the bank for the merchant. And so the money is going into their account and they're the ones that are pulling all the networks together to deal with all of these banks to get the payments, to deal with all the fees and, and fund and everything, you know, make sure it's all working correctly. And then they in turn take the money from the merchant's bank account in their company and they move it to the merchant's actual bank account. So they're kind of that middleman there, all right? So how do you make money selling merchant services? It's really simple. There's cost and there's markup. That's it, okay? So there's a cost to moving this money around, the interchange fees, the card brands have some costs, but in addition to that, credit card processing companies mark up those costs in order to cover their costs and make a profit, okay? So on that transaction where that $100 we talked about a minute ago where they're only gonna move you know, $98.50, let's say, over here, well, in actuality, they're gonna move $98.50 over here, but they're gonna move it to the processor. The processor is gonna grab another 50 cents, and then they're gonna move $98 to the merchant. Okay, so there's cost and there's markup and how you make money as a merchant services sales rep or ISO is that you are basically grabbing that part of that 50 cents and splitting that up with the processing company in order to make residual income. Now there's multiple ways you can make money in this industry. We're going to talk about that in the next video, but the core thing you have to understand is there's cost and there's markup. Every processor has generally the same cost structure. They're all paying the same interchange rates. They're all paying the same fees to Visa, MasterCard, and Discover, and American Express. The only difference is in that markup, and if they're marking up more or less than their competitors, and your choice as a credit card processing sales rep as you're selling is you're trying to sell at a markup to create some margin so you have a little bit of profit to generate income, and then there's other ways you can make money, and we're gonna talk about that in the next video. My name is James Shepard. Thanks for watching and listening.